So the Healthy Elections Project started to try to stand up an organization that would be laser focused on helping local election officials adapt to the pandemic. The Stanford MIT Healthy Elections Project is a joint effort founded by Nate Persilli at Stanford and Charles Stewart over at MIT to address the COVID-related challenges that we're seeing in this election. The way we've divided up a lot of the responsibility for this project is that the MIT folks are doing a lot of the empirical work, for example, the rates of cancellation of mail ballots or other sort of quantitative questions. And we here at Stanford Law School are doing a lot of the work on the administration and research about what's act the rules rules changes and the like. Each sort of contributes a different perspective to the election administration problems. We're trying to use our perch here in Silicon Valley to work with the internet platforms to also help them make some of the transitions that are necessary to help election officials. So whether it's poll worker recruitment or providing reliable voting information, we think that platforms like Facebook and TikTok and Twitter and Google have a special role to play in providing the information that voters and election officials deem necessary. The Healthy Elections Project is conducting foundational research on how to run an election in the time of COVID. We're also trying to help with the development of safe polling places and to track the litigation that's going on in courts around the country. In addition, we're really trying to make a difference in recruiting poll workers and placing them in polling places. And as with everything we do at Stanford, there's an educational component to this. So we have a policy lab where students can do research and get credit for it. We're all laser focused and trying to provide the kind of research that will help NGOs, government officials, election officials in general, and voters to try to make sure that we can pull off this election successfully. We've been doing qualitative research surrounding the primaries. What went well, what still ought to change or could change, or what are things that can be easily translated from one state to the next that works well. We also do sort of one-off research such as mail balloting. How does one use a Dropbox? What is a Dropbox? What in USPS's history is sort of affecting the way that we see mail-in balloting this election, mobile voting, whether that could be scaled in time for the election to serve rural areas. We've tried to bring together the Stanford community really to deal with these election problems. I've never worked with the D school before, but when it became clear that we needed to redesign our polling places, going to the D school uh, was the natural place to look. So the D school has put together a guide to healthy polling places, as well as other materials that are gonna go directly in the hands of local election officials to help them pull off this election what signage should be used, how the various tables should be spaced out, what does check-in look like, what are the safe substances that you can use on a voting machine, going as far as what does the parking lot line situation look like so that we can keep voters six feet apart at all times. They're also doing research on some of the more innovative practices that we're seeing throughout the country, such as outdoor voting, curbside voting in which voters never need to get out of their cars uh, and sort of compiling all of those things in an easily accessible format. A human-centered design approach allows you to tackle complex problems while putting real humans at the center of that process. Teams work to uncover complex needs, identify a wide range of ways to address those needs, and then they prototype and test a few of those concepts back with the individuals that they were designing for or with. One of the things that we're seeing in this election is an unprecedented amount of litigation. States are being sued for everything from their mail ballot processes to the availability of polling places. So one of the reasons that we put a litigation tracker on our website is to make sure that both the election officials themselves and the larger community can be aware of all the issues that are sort of uncertain in this election and that are ending up in court. So what we have created with through a partnership with Morris and Forster is a tracker that essentially outlines what states have current litigation, what the litigation looks like, what the status of it is, what issues are being covered, and have that in one database. It became clear early in the summer that one of the effects of the pandemic was going to be that a lot of the traditional poll workers who are senior citizens were not going to be volunteering in the polling place. When we have a poll worker recruitment shortage, election officials kind of have no choice but to consolidate or combine polling places, which can make it more difficult for uh, voters to get to the polls. It can make lines longer and it can also just mean a bit more crowding or more processing at every single polling location. So getting the necessary number of poll workers in the country to run the election is extremely important. We've been working with other campus organizations at Stanford and elsewhere to try to recruit students as poll workers 
and to sort of sound the alarm that we need a whole new crop of poll workers for this election. At Stanford Law School, we've uh, taught a series of policy labs in which uh, students can work for a real client uh, and try to make a difference in the world. In our case, uh, that client is the Healthy Elections Project, and we have now 50 students who are working with us uh, to write memos and do research and to take a class on all of the issues that concern adapting the electoral environment to deal with the pandemic. And so we'll be issuing our report uh, in the winter on what happened in this election. And we hope that it'll make a real difference going forward in the system of election administration. My biggest advice to people out there, voters especially, is to make a plan on how to vote and to make it as soon as possible so that you have options.